Thanks for clicking on the code. I bet you want to learn more about how a Kaiser spin bike works. Kaiser spin bikes are some of the best spin bikes you can have. And, and we have them here at SAS Poly Tech. So, so let me show you how to set it up for yourself and then how you're going to use it. Okay. Uh, there's a couple of adjustments that we're looking at. Most important is seat height. Let's start there, seat height. So if I hop on this bike right now, um, and you're going to look at me pedal from the side, uh, this is what it looks like if the seat is far too low. Uh, when I'm at the bottom of my, of my pedal stroke, so that's as low as the pedal goes, my knee is very, very bent. It's too bent. So this is how you adjust the seat for yourself, okay? So it takes a little bit of practice to start with. And the front of the post has markings. So once you get your height figured out, that you can always go back to that same marking. Okay, so I'm gonna raise this a bit. So there's a lever on the back here, I loosen, I raise the seat, I tighten it, all right? And now I really, I'm not sure where I'm at. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put, this is key. I put my heel on the pedal, okay? I put the heel on the pedal, I sit on the seat, and I want my knee in this position to be completely straight. There's a bit of a bend in there still. So this seat is still too low for me, okay? So I'm gonna go a little bit higher. Let's see it right over there. Okay, so now I get on the seat, I put my heel on the pedal, and with my heel on the pedal, now my knee is totally straight. Now I don't want my knee to be straight when I'm pedaling, but when I pedal, I'm gonna put the ball of my foot on the pedal, okay? And that means when my foot's at the bottom of the stroke, my knee has a slight bend to it, okay? So this is important. I never want the seat higher than this, but I could have the seat a little bit lower depending on how comfortable I am. Um, if you've never ridden a bike before, or maybe it's not a main part of your activity, a seat that's this high sometimes does feel a little uncomfortable. Feel free to lower it a little bit. You'll be fine, okay? So that's where the seat goes, all right. Uh, there's another adjustment on the on the seat uh, underneath. You can loosen the handle. And you can slide the seat forwards and backwards. I would say if you know you have long arms and a long torso, you're going to back that up. So more typically, males versus females. Females often have a shorter torso. They will tend to move the seat forwards. Men longer torso compared to leg length. I'll back it up. But then again, we're all different. So play around with that. That's a much less important adjustment. The front of the bike also has an adjustment where the handlebar position goes. There's a lever on the front, you loosen that, and now it lifts. But as it lifts, it also goes forwards. So it drops and comes backwards. I would put that where you feel it comfortable. My initial recommendation is always to drop it as low as possible. Sometimes that creates a feeling of discomfort because you're bent over too far. But then again, as it comes up, it also goes further away while you're reaching. So. Uh, sometimes it's a matter of just trying it, uh, not spending too much time the first time you use it to make sure you don't hurt yourself, okay? Uh, now these pedals, you'll see these pedals have two sides to them. One side has this basket that you can tighten so your, your running shoe stays tight, which is an important feature of using a spin bike. You want to be attached to the bike, okay? Uh, and then the other side has, has, a, has a clip, an SPD compatible clip. So if you have your average mountain bike shoe, now your average road bike shoe will not work on this. It has to be a, a typical mountain bike shoe. It will clip right onto these, okay? And there is an advantage to having your foot attached. Um, but as a beginner, and if that's why you're here to get the beginning technique, um, that's much less important. Um, down the road, more advanced cycling, you start to reap the rewards of being attached to the bike. So let's go from there. All right. So that's where you set it up for yourself, now you're comfortable. Uh, right here is a lever that uh, moves forwards and backwards. Uh, and you'll notice that when you do move it and you're looking at the computer screen, uh, bottom left-hand corner, you'll see gear. And the higher it goes, the higher the gear number goes and the harder your resistance. So that's how you adjust the resistance for yourself, okay? All right, and there's another really important number on the top of the computer, RPM rounds per minute, okay? Generally speaking, when you're on a bike, most of your time wants to be spent with an RPM of 90 or higher, okay? Uh, if you're new to cycling, 90 RPMs might feel impossible. Um, so what I would recommend is uh, practice with low resistance, 
Don't spend too much time, maybe five or 10 minutes at a time. And uh, after two or three workouts, you'll realize that you can actually get to 90 much more comfortably. You don't have to get stronger. You don't have to become more fit. It's just a movement pattern. Um, so, so I would encourage you before you start to do any real hard work on the spin bike, that you get comfortable with 90 RPMs or higher. It comes down to knee health. Knees don't like working hard at 70 RPMs, okay? Uh, but they're okay with 90 or higher. All right, so uh, once we get that established, you're pedaling at 90 RPMs or higher. Uh, there's a number of hand positions you can use on these bikes. There's no right or wrong. Um, whatever you find comfortable, more triathlon type position. Again, aerodynamics don't matter. You're not going anywhere. Um, I would suggest changing hand position, okay? Sometimes it's a matter of if you're feeling uncomfortable, just change the position a little bit, okay? So uh, I will note one thing uh, from a safety perspective, that flywheel back there uh, has some weight and it's rotating, okay? So when you're pedaling, there's one big difference between this bike and the bike you have in your garage. Bike you have in your garage that you ride around the block, um, when you're going down the road and you're pedaling and then you stop pedaling, the bike keeps moving, just coast. These bikes don't have a coast feature, okay? Meaning if you're pedaling really, really quickly and then you just decide to stop pedaling, the wheel keeps moving and will uncomfortably push your feet in a circle. Um, so just be aware of that. If you want the bike to stop quickly, you use this gear lever and you crank it all the way front to the front and that puts more resistance and it stops the wheel. So just be aware of that. If you're like hammering and hammering and hammering and then you just stop, the wheel keeps going, your feet keep moving. Inevitably what happens is a foot slips off the pedal, comes around, uh, the, the pedal then digs into your calf or your shin and now you've got a mark. So that's kind of one safety feature you want to be aware of. And that is how you use a Kaiser spin bike. Have fun. Good luck.